Fear not, my children, and quell your worries, for I have found the greatest solution for storing all of your components for your DIY needs. So let us embark on today's video to find out how I accomplished this great feat of modern engineering. Now this is my Benoit and I've been using it for about, I don't know, three or four years to store my components and it is just great. Now just like my overalls are the single greatest work garment to ever exist because uh, of all the stuff you can store in them, how modular they are, and just you can wear them to just about do anything. No plumbers crack. I believe that the Benoit is the greatest modular storage solution for somebody like me who has to do prototyping every single day and DIY builds every single day. I can get to all my components. It's all nicely organized. So let's see how I, or let's take a look at how I made this Benoit, uh, some of the choices that I made and how you can make your own at home or at work, put one in your garage. You can be so proud of it, mount it in your car and show it off to your friends every time you go hang out in the Walmart parking lot or in the Target parking lot. Or if you're like me, you don't hang out in any parking lot because you lost your car in the divorce. My feet sure do hurt after walking to work every day. So obviously categories are subjective to whatever your profession is. Me, I'm a BMS designer here at Pro Technology, so I have a bin full of self protection and balancing ICs and charger ICs. I have a ton of transistors, a ton of diodes, a ton of regulators for what I do in my day to day building and day-to-day -day prototyping and day-to-day -day designing. So uh, obviously your categories will fit whatever your kind of DIY niche is. However, something that I do on here that I haven't seen anybody do is component ranges while the components are still left in their individual baggies. Now, this is a big part of the bin wall. Every other solution like the component trays you take the components out of the original baggies. Maybe if they're on tape or reel, you cut them and then you lay them down to the bottom of the tray. Through hole resistors the same way, or you have those little weird square things that the components are always falling out of and you take them all out of tape and reel and dump them in there. I've never had success doing that. So I always like to leave the components in the original baggies like this and just stick them into the bin and then I pull out whatever I need, cut the piece of tape off or whatever it is, and everything stays nice and neat. So for instance, I have resistor 500 to 1K. I know what's in this bin, 1K to 5K, I know what's in this bin, 5K to 10K, I know what's in this bin. If a bin gets too full, then I split it. And so for instance, right here, one ohm to 50 ohm and 51 ohm to 100 ohm, I work a lot with sub 100 ohm ranges, so I needed to split this bin. It needed to get a little wider so that way I could accommodate everything in the ranges. So modular, your categories can change and everything. It's a living, breathing wall to where everything can grow and shrink and whatever it needs to do. So the question is going to come up, what if I have a lot of the same resistor? And my answer to that would be, don't do it. So. I decided a long time ago, for instance, this is a 220 ohm 0603 resistor. This is a Yago part number 07220RL in case you wanted to know. In my Altium library, I have one 220 ohm resistor, and it's this one. Unless I have some kind of specialty power resistor that I need for cell balancing, which would be a 1206 or a 1210. But for generic use, I have one 220 ohm resistor. It's this 0603. I don't use 0402 because I can't hand solder it. I don't use 0805 because it's too big on the board. 0603, I can still hand solder it easily and it doesn't take up that much board room. So my advice to you is if you're a DIYer, you do prototyping like me in design, pick a favorite component whatever it may be, pick a favorite resistor brand, whatever it is, and just use that for everything you need to do. Again, unless there's some special situation, like I said, uh, right here, this is a 100 ohm resistor, it's a 1210. And I also have a 100 ohm resistor 0603s. The 1210 is for cell balancing. So unless you have a special application, just pick a component and stick with it. So that way your bin wall can be as efficient as possible. Speaking of efficiency, that's what we're going to do in today's video. It has been, 
I think two years since I have gone through all my components and reorganized them, reorganized the categories. You can see I've written over all my categories. There are a bunch of handwritten labels and things. So I need to go through and fix it up today. There are components that I haven't even opened here. So let me show you how I go through it. We're going to organize all these components. We're going to put everything into brand new categories and we're just going to make it more efficient than it was. So that way, at least my boss will finally love me again. So let's look at what I consider to be the worst of it, which is this bottom row. So we'll start with these transistors. Now, used to, uh, there was only one bin of transistors. And so I just went ahead and did NPN and N-channel FETs just in the same box because there wasn't that many. And now I have three bins full and I'll really only use this first bin. So what I like to do um, if the transistors come in this kind of baggie, like from Mauser or DigiKey, just this cheap little baggie. And it's something that I use a whole lot. I will take some ESD bags. I got these from Uline, but you can get them from anywhere. And uh, with the uh, zip top, and I will label it and then put it in this nice baggie because it fits nicely into the bin. So that's just something little I like to do because these baggies can come in, of course, all shapes and sizes. So if it's something that I use a whole lot, I'll put it in a nice baggie. Now, the reason these haven't been put in a nice baggie, because over time I figured out what transistors I use the most, and I have put them in this first box. These are the transistors that I use the most. I, they're all in their nice individual baggies. And so these I haven't even touched. Some of them haven't even been opened. I haven't touched these in two or three years. So I'm going to keep these on the bin wall, but I'm not going to get rid of these. Let me show you what I'm going to do with these components that I haven't used, but I hate to get rid of. So engineers are hoarders, just accept it. And so we don't like getting rid of anything. So what I do is I have these bins that I have made up and you see it says transistors, N-P channel FETs and NPN-PMP transistors. Um, and this is what I call long-term storage. So I'm not going to get rid of them, but I'm going to put them in long-term storage, not just in a bin, but I'm going to organize them. So what I do is I will get all the part numbers and I've just threw them in an Excel spreadsheet. If we can see this here, I just threw them in an the Excel spreadsheet and this is all the part numbers that are going to be going in this bin. And then I have extra slots for anything, but here's all the part numbers for the P channel and the N channel FETs and the NPN and PNP FETs that are going to be going into this bin. So as I place them into this bin and I put me a little cardboard divider in here, you don't need to use cardboard because it's not ESD safe. It is, it is okay. It will be okay. But I'm just going to take all these baggies. I'm just going to stick them nice and snug down in this bin where they will more than likely go to die, uh, never to be used again. But it is okay because I'm not throwing them away. I don't feel guilty because I'm not a hoarder. And then up here, if you can see this in the P channel transistors, there are a few here that haven't even been opened. You can see they're still sealed, haven't even been opened. They're still sealed. And so they're going to go here. And then this is marking what's in here. So if I ever do need uh, a transistor that may be on an old build or something that I don't use anymore, it will be in this long-term storage bin. Now let's continue this trend for the rest of the components on this wall. So you can see I've already shortened the wall by two whole bins by just putting the unused stuff into long-term storage. So I'm gonna continue that trend for the diodes and the LEDs, the TVS diodes, the miscellaneous ICs, I may categorize some of these. I haven't determined that yet. Uh, the regulators and of course the references. So let's get this bottom row completely sorted. So after a pretty good while, I did not realize I had that many components in these bins. Boy, you can stuff a lot in these little bins. Um, I now have everything organized. I have reduced this one row by four bins. And then I have my four long-term storage bins transistors, miscellaneous voltage, miscellaneous ICs and voltage regulators, LEDs and LED parts like um, light pipes and things like that. And then diodes and TVS diodes. Of course, every box has its list in it um, that I made. So that way I know what all's in these boxes and they will go in the back storage room back there, uh, probably to never be seen again, but it's okay. So I'm just left with one box of each type of category that I had before. 
Again, your categories may be different. For instance, like my miscellaneous ICs, uh, there's an AT Tiny 85 in here along with some uh, I squared C isolators. Some people may want to break that out. I know what I have because it's my inventory, so I just put it in miscellaneous ICs because I know in my head what I have because I design with it all of the time. So again, your categories can be whatever they want, but the bins provide such great storage for all this stuff and easy access. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is these labels. They just they just look awful, these handwritten labels and stuff. So I do want to update the labels before we end the video today. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. So these little red bins are from my original component wall before I got the one that goes on the desk. And so we repurposed it to be a um, storage for hardware. So um, what our engineering team did was they took these little labels and printed uh, a nice designator for each one of these bins and what it contains. So they are Avery 6870 labels in case you want to go get the same one. So they have a template online. I'm going to go fill the template out with all of my categories and then stick them to the bins and hopefully they'll look as good as this. Isn't that beautiful? I'm sorry for crying, guys. This is a beautiful breeze to my eyes. Look how beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. So I hope everyone enjoyed me looking good in overalls and also learning about how I store my components. Now, over the next week, I do plan to do to the rest of this what I did to this row, go through everything, put what I don't need in long-term storage to go in the back room to die a slow and sad death, and um, maybe expand some stuff or shrink some stuff, just whatever I get into when I get to it. But that's the beautiful thing about this kind of component storage is if I need to add a bin in, I can scoot these over, add a bin in. If I need to uh, take away a bin, I can take away a bin. If I need to move something around, everything is just so modular and so accessible. So again, if you're a DIYer or you build a lot of prototypes like I do, this has been the most efficient and convenient way I've ever stored my components out of all the other methods I, methods I have tried. Also, it can be cheap. Our local Harbor Freight sells these little plastic bin walls, I think it has 30 bins in it for, I think $35. And so you could start something like this for just $35 and have 30 slots ready to go for all your components and then expand that out as you need to. So I wanna encourage everyone, I really enjoy this method of storage. I wanna encourage you to do it yourself as well. So if you like this video, I'd invite you to actually like the video, share it, subscribe, do all those kind of things. It certainly does help the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see everyone in the next video.